Good morning, our preteens. Pastor Dyson here, back with another Sunday lesson. I'm here in my new place, so that's why it looks a little bit different. You can see my bookshelf in the background there. But I'm so glad that you guys have decided to join me for another Sunday lesson. I hope you guys are doing well this morning, that you ate a good breakfast, that you had a good sleep last night, and that you're ready to dig into God's Word together this morning. Links to all of our playlists are down in the description, so make sure that you go check out some of our other videos, including the Clip of the Week playlist, which has been updated for you today. If you have some time after our lesson or some time during the week that you want to go through and watch some of our other videos, you can go and do that. Just a reminder to stay tuned until the very end of our lesson because you don't want to miss any of our important announcements because we include all our preteen announcements always every Sunday at the very end of our Sunday lesson. And we do have a new announcement this week, so stay tuned until the very end so you don't miss any important information. All right. Today, our topic is something that each of you will be familiar with. We're talking about friendship, and our question of the day today is this. Every Sunday lesson here at Arc Preteens, we have our question of the day. It's the one question that we seek to answer through looking at what the Bible has to say. So the question that we're asking today is, why doesn't God give me more friends? All right, so we're going to be talking about friendship. Specifically, why doesn't God give me more friends? more friends because sometimes it feels like we don't have enough friends or maybe our friendships aren't working out as we expected them to and we start to wonder why God who knows and loves us doesn't make sure that we have more than enough friends so that we're never lonely and so what do you think why do you think God doesn't fill our lives to overflowing with friends or does he I think most of us would agree that having more friends is usually a good thing but who we're friends with actually matters because having a few good quality friends is way more important than having just a large number of friends. And so that leads me to my first discussion question of this morning. Every Sunday lesson here, here at Arc Preteens, we disperse these discussion questions throughout the lesson. It's an opportunity for you to pause the video to have a conversation with whoever you're watching with. Or if you have a piece of paper and a pen, you can write down and journal your thoughts. Or if you don't have either, you can just think about your answers to these questions. But my first question, my first discussion question for you today is what qualities do you value most in your friends? When you're thinking about your friends that you have or when you're considering, you know, making new friends, what are important qualities that you value in a friend? Could be loyalty, could be kindness, compassion, uh, could be... It could be something like they have a nice house, like just you can be honest. But what kind of qualities, either immaterial or material, do you look for in a friend? Hopefully more immaterial than material. Uh, but take a moment, pause here and consider this. All right, now that you've thought about what qualities you value in a friend, you may be beginning to see, or maybe you've experienced firsthand, that friendships can be incredibly challenging and difficult at the start because making new friends takes us out of our comfort zones and, and as we get to, to know other people uh, we start to learn more and we start to grow as we get to know others and we start to form new relationships and strong bonds of friendship and as we make friends and as our friendships change and grow over the years God always is helping us to get along and I think we can all relate to the desire to have more friends Sometimes it seems like our friends are turning away from us, or sometimes it may even seem like we just don't have any friends at all, and that's never a great feeling, which leads me to two more discussion questions this morning. One, the first one, is do you wish you had more friends? Why or why not? Maybe you do wish you had more friends, and then kind of explain why, or maybe you don't wish you had more friends. Maybe you're content with the amount of friends you have now, and then kind of explain why not. And then the second question, do you think God gives us all the friends we need? Why or why not? Do you think God is the one who provides all the friends that we need? Or is he just kind of hanging out waiting and like seeing what will happen? And so take a moment, pause here and consider these two questions. Friendships can be a tough thing. We all want friends, but sometimes we feel bad because other people have more friends or because we just feel lonely. Now, the Bible has quite a bit to say about friendship. So let's start off in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 12, where we read that two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? 
A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So based on this, these four verses from Ecclesiastes, I want you to consider to consider this next discussion question. What do you think this verse tells us about friendships? If you need to rewind and read it again, you can do that. If you want to pause and read Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12 in your own Bible, you can do that as well. But after you've read it again, if you need to, what do you think that verse in, those verses in Ecclesiastes tell us about friendships or human relationships in general? It doesn't even have to be a friendship. But what is that those, those verses in Ecclesiastes tell us about human relationships. So take a moment, pause here, and consider this. Now, Jesus calls us his friends in the Bible because in John chapter 15, verse 15, that's the Gospel of John, we read Jesus saying, I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. Jesus, for everything in our lives, he's our prime model and example for how we're to live. From loving and obeying God to loving and serving one another, Jesus' life models the way for us and how we're supposed to live now in the light of our salvation. And if we look closely, we might discover that for people who need friends, we can actually be the answer to our question of the day. We may wonder, why doesn't God give me more friends? But the reality is, is that other people are wondering that exact same thing that you're wondering, and we can come alongside them and befriend them. If we look for people who are looking for friends, then sometimes we find friends in surprising places, just like Jesus did as we're about to read. But before we start exploring those those uh, stories in the Bible of people who really needed a friend, my next discussion question for you is when have you really needed a friend? When have you really needed a friend? I told my embarrassing story back when we were doing in-person gatherings of how I was on the swing set one day at recess and I fell backwards and my pants got caught on the like one of the the chains on the side of the swing and so I fell down on my back and with my and my pants got pulled up around my ankles and so I'm on my back on the playground my legs are stuck in the air when my underwear is showing and uh, luckily my underwear didn't come down as well and I was eating crackers at the time so I was choking because I was upside down and I really needed a friend to help me out and if you guys remember the story when I told it the first time my friend at the time Ryan did not help me he just stood there and laughed at me because you know everyone could see my underwear and I was told I was choking and dying on the swing set so I really needed a friend now maybe your story or your experience of needing a friend isn't as embarrassing uh, I would hope it's not as embarrassing I wouldn't wish what happened to me on my worst enemy but i want you to take a moment pause here and consider a time in your life when you really needed a friend so as you've now realized in your discussion we all need a good friend and guess what jesus was there for each of the four people that we're going to be reading about this morning sometimes we get so focused on finding friends and wishing we were friends with you know like the popular kids who already have lots of friends that we miss out on the people who are right in front of us who really need a good friend and who could be really good friends to us. And so let's find out what Jesus did when it came to other people. We're going to start in Luke chapter 5, verse 27 to 30. Later, as Jesus left the town, he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Later, Levi held a banquet in his home with Jesus as the guest of honor. Many of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with them, but the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained bitterly to Jesus' disciples, why do you eat and drink with such scum? Ooh, harsh words from the Pharisees there. Let's look at our next story, still in the Gospel of Luke. We're going to jump ahead two chapters to chapter 7, verse 36 to 48. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman, that means immoral just means sinful. When a certain, let's say sinful woman from that city heard that he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. 
When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other, but neither of them could repay him, so he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? And Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven, so she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Very interesting story that we're reading about here with the sinful woman uh, and the parable that Jesus tells in the middle to illustrate his point. Let's go now. We're going to jump backwards a gospel to the gospel of Mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 8 then skipping forward to 18 to 19. So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of his boat, of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained even with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. With a shriek, he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, No, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So we come to this demon-possessed man who could not be bound up by chains or shackles, and Jesus heals him. And then later on in the narrative, the man begs to go with Jesus and to be with him, but Jesus tells him to stay, to go back, and to tell everyone what has happened to him. Very interesting. And then our final story is in John chapter 13, verse 1 to 5. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of, Iscari son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had gone from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. Now I have two more discussion questions for you. Why do you think Jesus befriended people others wouldn't? We saw that multiple times, whether it be the demon-possessed man or the sinful woman. We see that Jesus quite often was befriending people and showing kindness to people that others were not. And so why do you think that he did that so often? And then the second question, who do you think Jesus would befriend today? Who are the kinds of people that Jesus would go to that no one else goes to? The kinds of people that he would minister to, to show compassion and kindness, to show them grace and mercy. Who are those people in our 21st century context instead of a first century context? So take a moment, pause here, and consider these two questions. Jesus was a master at serving people and loving his friends. And when it comes to making friends, we can learn a lot from him. He became friends with all kinds of people, and it never mattered to Jesus whether someone was, was rich, poor, sick, sad, happy, disliked, or popular. Jesus loved everyone just like he loves us. He was the greatest example that testifies and is a testament to the fact that God helps us to get along. It's kind of in that vein of Christian love, that agape love that we've been talking about during our Friday Discord Devos in Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. 
It's kind of that Christian love encapsulated. Jesus is our example of that. And that leads me to my big idea for this morning. Every Sunday lesson here at Arc Preachings, we have our big idea. It's our one sentence, one point summary. It's how we bring the whole lesson together. Uh, It's the one thing I want you to take away from this lesson. It's kind of like our answer to the question of the day. And our big idea for today is serve those that God has placed around you. If we're always caught up worrying about how many or how little friends we have, we can actually forget to serve and love those that God has placed around us. Jesus did not serve every single person in Israel, like physically. Like we saw Jesus healed, he healed a lot of sick people. We can't deny that uh, because the text tells us that as many people were coming to him, he was healing. But guaranteed, there were people that Jesus didn't heal. There were people that didn't hear Jesus teach. There were people that didn't even know Jesus had existed until after his death and resurrection and the gospel started to spread far and wide. And so Jesus didn't serve every single person in Israel because he was spending a majority of time with his 12 disciples pouring into them because they were going to become the 12 apostles minus Judas Iscariot and adding Matthias, or Matthias, Matthias. And so Jesus was pouring into these 12 specific people who were going to be the starting point of the early church. But in loving and serving his 12 disciples, Jesus also did not neglect nor shun those who were around him either. Those who came to him were healed, they were cleansed, they were saved, and were made new. We looked at this in our uh, Mark series, in our sermon series on Mark. There was the demon-possessed man that stood up in the synagogue and Jesus cast the demon out, healing him. Uh, Simon, who we know as Peter, his mother-in-law was sick and Jesus healed her. There was a big, you know, event where people just kept bringing their sick people to Jesus and he kept healing them. And so we know that Jesus spent a lot of time pouring into, instructing, nurturing his 12 disciples, but he also didn't neglect or shun those that were around him. And those are two extremes that we have to be aware of uh, and avoid when we are living and when we're uh, interacting with other people. We need to avoid the extreme of spreading ourselves too thin and so thin that we actually neglect those people who are closest to us, like our families, uh, like our church family, like our immediate friend group. If we spread ourselves too thin, trying to serve everyone all the time, you know, pouring out everything, pouring out everything, we can actually neglect to serve and love those who are closest to to us. And so that's one extreme that we have to be careful of. But the other extreme that is equally as bad and we have to take equal precautions against is that you become so close and so isolated in your close few people that you begin to totally ignore and neglect others who are around you. So there's the on the one hand there's the extreme of of spreading yourself too thin that you neglect those who need your care and love such as your family when you become a parent. Uh, your children will need your love and care and compassion. And God has called us to serve husbands to to love their wives, wives to serve their husbands, the children to obey the parents. And so we have this family unit. And so that would be like the prime, like smallest kind of uh, 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 circle, I guess you could say, that we need to serve and love. And so we spread ourselves too thin that we neglect them, uh, our closest and most intimate relationships. But then also, on the other hand, we can not spread ourselves too thin. We can actually do the opposite and so focus solely, like so much on this one small group that we actually neglect to serve and love those who are around us, which is equally as bad because we're called to serve people. Everyone who we come in contact with is our neighbor. And so we're called to serve them and love them. You don't have to, you know, go like do these extravagant things serving someone could just be as simple as holding the door when you're walking in at the mall you see someone behind you you open the door let them go in first that's like such a small thing that we don't even think about sometimes or saying please or saying thank you these are such small things that we don't even think about or you know washing your dish and putting it away so your parents don't have to wash your dish like these really small things that we can do to serve others and so we don't want to spread ourselves too thin but we don't we also don't want to become so insulated in one group that we actually neglect and start to uh, forfeit our duties and responsibilities to love others as well 
Because our time on Earth, it's very limited here, preteens, and so we must be wise with how we spend it. We need to look to Jesus always because apart from our salvation, apart from being delivered from our sin and being given a new heart, it would be impossible for us to love and serve like Christ did. We must look to Jesus to be made new and to grow in this new nature by the power of the Holy Spirit every single day. And we're never going to get it perfect. And the parable of the Good Samaritan shows us that we're never going to get it perfect. But we can strive every day to love more, to serve more, so that as we are sanctified, we would become a little bit more like Jesus each and every single day. And so I pray that, well, I don't, we're going to pray, but that, I hope that would be our prayer for this morning, that we would become more like Jesus in the way that we serve and love those who are not only around us, but we serve and love God who first served and loved us by sending his son to die in our place to take the punishment of our sins upon himself. So if you would join me, preteens, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another Sunday lesson. I thank you that we can come together and address these big questions and consider friendships and see the way that uh, Jesus, who was fully God and fully man, as he walked on this earth, how he interacted with other people, how his human relationships were formed, the things that he prioritized and the people he talked to and ministered to. Lord, Christ is our example in everything, in every aspect of living, whether it be living and worshiping you or living and loving others around us, Lord. Christ is our example. So help us that as we read our Bibles and read about what Jesus did, help us to not only know it in our minds, because facts are good, but help it to sink down into our hearts, Lord, so that we would be transformed and the way that we live would actually be changed. Not just our mind, not that just we would just become smarter, uh, in an IQ sense, but that we would become more like Christ in the way that we live and act and conduct ourselves here on earth. Because, Lord, you have placed so many people around us, whether it be at school or friend groups or when we go on to get jobs or our families. Lord, you have given us all these areas of influence in people's lives where we can love them and serve them as you have first loved and served us. And not only will the world see the way that the church loves each other, will it be a testament and a testimony to your love for us, but the way that we then go and show that love, the way we shine the light, being the salt and the light, when we speak truth and we deal in grace and mercy with others, Lord, when we do those things, those serve as testimonies to, to you and to the good work that you have done in our lives, to the salvation that you have granted us and saved us. And so, Lord, I pray that as we consider this next upcoming week and as we consider uh, what it means to serve and to love others. I pray that you would help us to do just that, that we wouldn't just serve just to check something off a box, that we wouldn't, uh, you know, force this love, Lord, but that we would just naturally, out of the overflow and abundance of your Holy Spirit's provision, would you produce these fruits of love and joy in our lives, that we may share it with those who are around us, that we may enjoy you and your presence, and that we would do everything for the glory and honor of your name and we would bring all the praise back to your name and just thank you for all that you have done and so lord i thank you for today i thank you for every student that is listening and watching and i pray you'd be with them in this upcoming week i pray you'd bless our sunday lunches lord in the hands that are preparing it i pray you would bless the food to our bodies that it would nourish us uh, i pray you would bless the conversations that we would have with everyone who we are eating with whether it be with friends, family, or strangers, and that in everything this week we would seek to glorify you and honor you as Lord and King. So we thank you, we love you, and we pray and ask all these things in your holy and precious name. Everybody said amen, amen, amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our other Sunday lessons or any of the other videos that we make. Just a reminder that links to all of our playlists are down in the description, so make sure you go check some of our other content out when you get a chance. We have a brand new, super exciting opportunity that's coming up right after spring break, and it's our brand new preteen club on Wednesday evenings. And you're saying, Pastor Dyson, that says kids club. And yes, you're right, it says kids club. We don't have a preteen club graphic right now. So, you know, we'll, we'll put that in the works. I'll put a request in, we'll see what we can get. But we are launching a brand new preteen club on Wednesday evenings this will be similar in a sense to our broadway's kids club program 
except as preteens, we're gonna be doing separate activities. We're gonna be doing different activities and lessons from what Kids Club is doing. Uh, I think one week is we're gonna learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube, another week we're gonna learn how to juggle, another week we're gonna learn how to knit. And so we're just gonna do a whole bunch of fun stuff together. And so this is gonna be every Wednesday evening starting at 6.30 p.m. This is start beginning on March 31st, I should say. And then every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. We're gonna go about an hour, maybe hour 15. So we're gonna end at like 7.30, 7.45. And we're just gonna come, we're gonna hang out, we're gonna do some different activities and crafts. We're gonna learn how to do different things. And then we're going to uh, look at the Gospel of John together because we're gonna have some friends coming to Preteen Club that may not have ever been to church before. And so we're gonna share the Gospel uh, not only with our friends who may be coming to a church activity for the first time, but also for you, because as Christians, we never outgrow the gospel. We can never hear the gospel enough. And it's very easy for us to drift and forget the gospel. You know, in the chaos of life, we neglect these things. And so it's always good to bring our focus back to and bring our attention and hone in back onto the gospel, which is our source of truth and life. Because without Jesus, without the gospel, we have nothing and we are nothing. And so we're going to do a bunch of fun activities. We're going to talk about the gospel and the gospel of John. It's going to be a good time. So, and then every week we're going to be doing like a new activity. And so we'll always have something where it goes from March 31st and then every Wednesday until June 9th. So it's 11 weeks. And so if you would like to sign up for our preteen club, I will include the link down in the description. It'll be just under, like there's the little blurb about the lesson. And then I'll put the link for the, the preteen club sign up for you. So make sure you go sign up at that link in the description because I want to see you there on Wednesdays at 6.30 starting March 31st. And unfortunately, because of this new Wednesday initiative, we will be stopping our Friday Discord Devos, at least for the time being. We'll put it on pause. Maybe we'll pick it up again in the fall. We'll see what happens. And so our last study, our last Discord Devo is going to be March 26th. So we have this Friday coming up. Uh, and then we have the next Friday, and I think that's it. I think we have two weeks left because, yes, uh, no, yes, we have this, this Friday, next Friday, is that correct? I don't know. I've lost track. We, I think we have two Fridays. We're going to be stopping on March 26th, uh, so whatever Friday that is. So we're going to keep going. We're going to keep plugging, chugging through Philippians. Uh, we'll see how far we can get, but uh, that our last one will be coming on March 26th. And so, if you don't know, if you don't even know what I'm talking about, every Friday evening we have our own Discord server on Arc Pre. It's our Arc Preteens Discord server. It's where all our students and leaders are able to connect and send each other memes. Or when we play video games together, we use it for voice chat. And so, if you would like to join our Discord server, send me an email. My email is down in the description. And when you are signing up, have your parent create the account for you, uh, just because uh, there, we've had some confusion and some mix up with some other students who have been unable to get on with us. So I would encourage you to have your parent create your account for you. So then you can come in, join our Discord server. And then all you have to do to join our Discord Devo on a Friday, we start at 7 p.m., is join the Discord Devo voice channel. And I'll be in there with Victor and a couple other students. And we are working through Philippians. We're, this week, we're going to be continuing Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. We're looking at how our love is to be grounded and guided in knowledge and discernment. That's what we're talking about this Friday. It's going to be a good one, so make sure you guys are there. But yeah, just a heads up, we will be stopping Discord Devo. Last one will be on March 26th. Season 3 of Minecraft Mondays. We'll be making a brief return for spring break on March 15th and March 22nd at 1 p.m. And then Poco students, you guys can also play on the 29th of March because your spring break is a week removed from the Vancouver spring break. So come play Minecraft with us on any of those three Mondays, all three if you want. You could pick two or if you can only make one. We're going to be starting at 1 p.m. We're going to have our live streams. We're going to be hanging out in a Minecraft world, playing together. And so Minecraft Mondays will also start back up in the summer, but we have a surprise season two and a half, I guess, of Minecraft Mondays during spring break. So join us March 15th and 22nd if you're in Vancouver, 
and then 29th if you're in Poco at 1 p.m. to play some Minecraft with us. And if you can't play, then you can always join us in the summer. And again, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, we have our very own Arc Preteens Minecraft Realm. It's a specific realm. It's basically a server for Arc Preteen students that nobody else can access. It's all ours. It's our own. You can build whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. And so if you would like to join our Minecraft server, uh, send me your Minecraft username to my email and I will get you added to our Arc Preteens Realm. I do have to say that you do have to own the Java edition of Minecraft. We do not play on the console edition, we don't play on the Bedrock edition, uh, and we don't play on uh, Windows 10 edition. Yeah, that's the last one. We don't play on console, uh, Bedrock, or Windows 10 edition. So make sure you have the Java edition of Minecraft. You can get Java for both Mac and PC, but make sure you have the Java edition if you would like to play Minecraft with us. And that's all the announcements that I have for you today, preteens. I hope you guys have a great week this week. Uh, last week, I told you about James Coates, the pastor from Edmonton who is in prison. Uh, he had his bail hearing. It was either yesterday or early this, I'm recording on Friday. It was either on Thursday or early Friday morning, but he has been denied bail. He will be kept in prison until his trial date on March, uh, not March, May 3rd. So please keep Pastor James Coates in your prayers, a faithful pastor and minister who is in prison. Pray that he would be kept safe. He has his Bible with him, so, you know, he's he has the word of God. So, uh, But please keep Pastor James Coates in your prayers and all the other pastors uh, who are frightened, who are scared, who are unsure. Uh, and just for the church in general, uh, the worldwide church, you know, persecution still rages on in countries like China, North Korea, Nigeria, and everywhere in between. And so keep the international church in your prayers as well. Not only Pastor James Coates, although keep him in your prayers, but keep the international church as well because they go through much worse. They're not just thrown in prison when they're persecuted. They're beaten, they're killed, they're tortured. There so many horrible, horrible things happen to Christians worldwide all because of their faith in Christ. And so keep the international church in your prayers this week. And I hope to see you guys soon. But until next time, God bless you guys.